Hi, welcome to our simple video presentation. My name is Pastor Jesus V. Valenzuela, and uh, I am officially doing this broadcast for the House of Grace, Jesus Christ Ministries, Incorporated. Today, we are going to talk about a very simple, but can also be profound, message entitled, Everything Must Go Somewhere. Everything must go somewhere. Everything must go somewhere. Everything means all. All means, including all of us, must go somewhere. Therefore, the question that we should ask ourselves is, where are we going? Where am I going? These are relevant questions because definitely we are all going somewhere. Again, everything must go somewhere. Think of this. From ancient animals, including all the dinosaurs and all the animals which were buried deep in the ground before, during, and after the Genesis flood, became oil deposits into energy that makes the world's industries and economies moving. From trees buried deep in the ground, into coal mines, into energy that makes power plants, ships, trains, and other vehicles running, and some of the coals compacted by so much pressures of the earth into rough diamonds, into beautiful treasures of kingdoms, into engagement rings that seal most relationships that lead to weddings, that establish families, that help shape societies. From flowers into seeds, into plants, or into trees, into furniture, into houses, into boats, into crosses, into paper, into paper products, and into paper bill currencies. From plants into food, into medicine, into clothing, from seashells and corals, into colored and white sands in our beaches, from seashell into jewelries, or into beautiful and exotic decorations. From irritating sands that irritate clams, that make them produce some fluids that coat the sands that later become beautiful and precious pearls into beautiful jewelries. From exploding stars that rain down gold dusts and gold nuggets, that became gold deposits in the bowels of the earth into treasures of countries and kings and the wealthy, into precious jewelries, into gold furnitures of the tabernacle that typified Christ for the purpose of worship. Everything must go somewhere. We can also speak of simple things that are transformed into some things that result into negative consequences when abused by people. From sugar cane into molasses, into plastic that pollute our planet due to misuse, and molasses into alcohol abuse. From grains and fruits into alcohol abuse. From plants into chemicals supposedly intended for good uses but are turned into drug abuse. Everything must go somewhere. Life itself is a journey. Life is never steady. Think from one egg cell and one sperm cell that unite and become an embryo into a fetus 
into a baby that becomes a fully grown human being with unimaginable potentials to become somebody that can greatly affect his or her world. A soul that can know Christ and be saved and reign with Christ in eternity. Everything must go somewhere. But unlike anything else, only men and angels must go to everlasting destinations. So I better ask myself, where am I going? Where am I going to stay forever? Where am I going to spend eternity? The Bible says, because all have sinned and fell short of God's standard, we are all supposed to be going into everlasting judgment and fire. But because He loves us so much, He extended to us His mercy by giving us grace or unmerited favor through His only begotten Son who died our death on the cross and rose again, ascended on high, sent down the Holy Spirit so we can all be saved and have our direction changed into the heavenly kingdom instead of into the lake of fire. But going to the eternal kingdom of God has been our impossible predicament. In Jeremiah 10.23, the Bible says, Lord, we know that people do not control their own destiny. It is not in their power to determine what will happen to them. Proverbs 16.25 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. But the Lord is always ready to help us, help us walk in the right direction. That is, if we want His help. The book of Psalms 37, 23, and 24. The steps of good men, or shall I say, graced men. The steps of good men, because of God's favor, are directed by the Lord. He delights in each step they take. If they fall, it isn't fatal, for the Lord holds them with His hand. We must all go somewhere. But understand this, that we are headed to where we are looking. So look unto Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Look no farther. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart right now. In Revelation 3.20-22, to Jesus is saying here, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to the churches. In 2 Peter 3, 9, 3, 9 to 15, this is what the Bible says. The Lord isn't really being slow about His promise. His promise return. As some people think, no, He is being patient for your sake, he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. And the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy 
and godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hearing it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth he has promised. A world filled with God's righteousness. And so dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in His sight. And remember, the Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. Everything must go somewhere. So where are you going? Always tell yourself, I am going to my God, my Creator, my Heavenly Father. He has been waiting for me. His kingdom has been prepared for me before the foundation of the world. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am blessed. I am saved. And I'm going to heaven. You can make those declarations. After that you have received salvation. What is salvation? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. But how to believe in Christ is the question. Faith is more than just a mental assent. Saving faith is always active. It accepts by acting upon what God offers. We must be plunged into the payment for our salvation, which is the gospel of Christ, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. To be plunged into the gospel of Christ is explained by Paul here. In Romans 6, 3 through 5. And I'm going to read. Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in baptism, we joined Him in His death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. To be baptized is to be plunged into the payment for our sins. To be baptized in water is to be buried with Christ in that baptism so you are being plunged or buried or dipped into the payment into that victory into that salvation from god through christ our lord on the day of pentecost when the 120 received the baptism in the holy spirit and they all spoke in tongues the people gathered in the upper room to see what was happening in the upper room. And so Peter, after that they said they were drunk. Peter stood up and preached to them Christ, the resurrected Christ, whom they have crucified. And the Bible says in verse, verse 37 of chapter 2 of the book of Acts, Acts 2, 37 through 39. Now when they heard this, that this was the preaching of Peter about Christ. Now when they heard this, they were stung or cut to the heart. That means they got convicted. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, special messengers, they said, brethren, what shall we do? And Peter answered them, 
Repent, change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner selves instead of rejecting it. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of and the release from your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is to and for you and your children and to and for all that are far away, even to and for as many as the Lord our God invites and bids to come to himself. When you have Christ, you are definitely going somewhere glorious not somewhere oblivious. In John 14, 1 to 3, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, and prepare a place for you. I will come again. And receive you to myself. That where I am. There you may be also. You are going somewhere glorious. When you receive the word of God. When you receive Jesus Christ. Into your life. And when you are plunged into that victory into that gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the payment of your freedom, the payment for your freedom, the payment for all your sins. Amen. Today is the perfect time to turn to God and to forsake all of your sins, to accept Him into your hearts, and to believe and obey His word for your salvation. The world is fighting the unseen by the naked eye viruses that are able to wipe out the whole population of the world and who knows who'd be the next victims. It pays to be sure of your everlasting destination. But there is also an unseen power, the power of God, that can protect you from any pestilence and any danger. The power that can bless you. The power that can save your soul from the lake of fire. And the power that can take you into his eternal kingdom. Everything must go somewhere. So by his grace, go to his eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. Join with me in a short and simple prayer. You can raise your hands wherever you are. You can close your eyes. But please open your heart to the Lord today. Father in heaven, we come to you right now. We thank you, Father, for your word that has been preached to me. Father, right now, I am opening my heart. I am opening my mind to you, Father God. Speak to me. Speak to my mind and touch my heart. Lord God Almighty, I want to go somewhere glorious that is your kingdom, your eternal kingdom with your eternal presence. Thank you so much for inviting me to go and inherit your eternal kingdom. Father, I come to you right now. I accept you into my heart. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please share this video to your friends. In Jesus' name, amen.